Do you really need plates? Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and I'm making what I think could be a controversial issue, but maybe not. If you've been following this channel for a not, this probably isn't controversial for you. If, if you're here for the first time, this might make you mad. I don't, I don't really know. But my question is, what is the role of plates or armor, right, body armor, for the modern American Minuteman? Are, are those valuable or not valuable or whatever? And that's in large part what this series, the American Minuteman Gear series, started on. If you go all the way back a couple years, and you watch the very first episode of this uh, series, right? And I talk about, uh, I think we've been lied to. And I, and I have a, a thing that I still stand by, pretty much everything I said there, I think. Uh, I think, because I don't remember all that I said, but I'm pretty sure I stand by it. Uh, basically, like, do we, do we actually need plates? Is that really a priority, right? And here I am a couple years later, having gone through a couple iterations of kit, as far as, and originally it was with webbing and whatever, and I've since moved to chest rigs and, and a ruck, and I've designed a chest rig. Um, you know, so I've, I've, I've kind of, you know, made some changes in how I do kit, right? And one of the things that's really stayed consistent is my lack of defaulting to plates, right? Uh, there's, there's a couple reasons for that. One is weight primarily, right? But do, like, like in, in the spectrum of importance, how important are plates? Do you even need plates, right? And uh, I think, you know, again, it's America. You do what you want. You can, you can own plates. You can not own plates. I'm not here to convince you of, of either one. I'm just saying, look, if I was talking to a guy and it was, it was their, their, they're just buying kit, right? They, they just bought a rifle. They got a wonderful PSA rifle. And, uh, and now they're like, well, what do, I, what do I do next, right? I would say, hey, man, get a rifle. You got that? That's great. Get a rig, like a, probably a chest rig, but you know, I designed a chest rig, so I obviously I'd tell them to get that one. Uh, you know, or, or a belt kit or whatever, right? Uh, and get a ruck. And, and we can do a lot with that. If you have a rifle, a rig, and a ruck, we can do a lot with that. And if they were like, well, you know, Dylan, should I get plates? Or what about plates? I hear that's important. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not saying they're unimportant. I'm just saying, look, if you give me a guy who has a rifle, a rig, and a ruck, right? A quality one of those. And then we can, we can run. We can do training. We can work. There's, let's spend a lot more money on bullets and magazines and practicing um, and taking appropriate classes and stuff like that. Then I think it's okay to circle back around to plates. Because let me tell you a controversial take prone is greater than uh, plates. You know, I, I just think that, that being prone, it affords you better protection than plates. Now, again, you know, hey, if we were, I can hear the howls of indignation right now, like Dylan, if you're wearing a chest rig, you can't get prone that well, you idiot. To which I would say, yes, you can, you can still get prone. Or, hey Dylan, I can still wear plates and get prone, you idiot. And I would say, yeah, I mean, okay, you can, right? I'm just saying, Again, we're looking at the limited resources that we have, right? We're looking at the limited resources that we have. And nobody has infinite money, unfortunately. So if I have to choose about where I'm going to place my priorities, priorities, I'm going to say that plates are further down the list. Just because if you give me a rifle, a rig, and a ruck, and we're going to try to use appropriate cover, and we're going to try to, you know, you get prone, and we're going to spend the time and money that we would have spent on plates on ammo to practice and classes to train in, man, I'm, I'm taking that ammo in those classes, right? I want someone who is skilled and proficient and understands how to work with me and my team before I want someone that's just an armored up Bowser battle turtle, right? That's, that's what I want. Now, look, I'll be 100% honest with you, right? I mean, if, if I'm doing anything, if there's civil unrest in the city that I live in, yeah, I'm gonna put my plates on. Okay, I'm gonna put my helmet on. I'm probably even gonna put my, my battle belt on, you know, with the pistol belt and everything. Like, that's probably all going on. Why? Well, because I'm, I'm in an urban environment and it would just behoove me better to have that, okay? Probably. So, you know, I'm, it's not that I'm opposed to plates or I'm saying plates bad. I'm just saying when it comes to priorities, right, it's not as high of a priority for me as it was three, four years ago. I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. Particularly when we start talking about this in context, because context matters, of American Minutemen. Who is that? Everyday guys like you and me, right? Who want the gear, excuse me, skills and tactics 
to be able to fight and win wars that, so that when China invades and you know, Red Dawn thing happens, we can do our thing, the LARPing Minecraft, whatever, whatever, okay? So that's what we're talking about here. And for those guys, wh what do we have plates for? Well, we have plates to protect ourselves from getting shot. When you put, as soon as you put on plates, in my mind, you become heavy infantry, right? You're gonna go in here and you're gonna fight it out until the other guy runs away or is dead. That's what you're doing. You're not, you're not exactly looking to run away. You're looking to purposefully go in and duke this fight out. As an American Minuteman, is that gonna be your default tactic? Probably not, right? When Red Dawn happens and China drops in, et cetera, et cetera, they're probably gonna have more money, more people, more equipment, more resources than you. So why are you gonna gear up and fight a knockdown, drag out battle with someone who is bigger, stronger, heavier, can punch more often and harder than you can? Why would you do that? What's the advantage to you there, right? And so when you start to think about things like that, to me, again, that's why plates keep getting pushed down the list of priorities. Are they unimportant? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they're not as high of a priority because of all those factors that I just listed as I would have said previously. Now, you may totally disagree and I would love to hear your opinion on that. This is a place for respectful uh, disagreement. So that's fine. But that's currently where I'm coming in at. Maybe I'll make a video in a year and I'll completely flip flop, although I doubt it, I've kind of settled here, but hey, could happen, I reserve the right to change my mind. So I would say plates, not as high of a priority, not bad, if you have them, don't toss them. But if you don't have them, is that something I would tell you to go run out and buy right now? No, probably not. Uh, now, if you have, you're like, listen, Dylan, I have a rifle, a ruck, and a rig, and I'm, you know, I've done a lot of training, and I, I can pass these quals, and I'm pretty proficient, and I have a team of people that we've spent some time together, and we got everything squared away. Now I'm gonna go buy plates. I'd say, okay, maybe buy night vision first, uh, but you know, then you, then you can buy plates. Hope that's helpful. Hope that gives you something to think about. Do brave deeds and endure.